Today we'll make a butterfly box and a fairy home. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first is going to be the butterfly light box. We are going to start off with this pack of paper butterflies from Dollar Tree. They come in assorted sizes and colors. I'm going to use this, uh, it's almost like a bank box or a shadow box. And a string of lights, make sure they work. This is uh, just like a little moss mat. All right, so to get this box open, y'all, I'm telling you about the struggle. I could not find the edge, but finally, ta-da, there it is. There it is. We're going to use that as the base. So I'm going to measure off my mat here and mark it with a marker. And then I'm going to cut inside of that line because it needs to be smaller than that. You're going to have about an eighth of an inch all the way around the edge that you can still see the mat, the uh, square underneath it. See, it was too, too big that time, so I'd have to trim it down. Now, it's not going to fit back on the inside. The slot that is where you slide the back onto is too thin for adding anything to it. So we're just going to change the shape of the box just slightly, or I would say the background of the box. So I'm going to take off this edge piece. And since I broke mine, it's just MDF, not a big deal. I'm just going to add some glue. I added some E6000, glued it back together. It's strong, no problem. Then my E6000 has a hole in it. So I'm going to just go right there where it's squirting out and add some of that E6000 on here and put that frame piece back down on the box. And I'm going to add some hot glue too to make it quicker. And then put that back in place. No problem. It's going to be in the back and it's going to be covered. So not an issue. Now it will fit just laying right on the back. All righty. So you can see here that I have an edge around here and later on, that's where we're going to put our lights right in that little track and it will be flush when you lay it down. That's what we want. So I'm going to just use hot glue. That's all I really need here. This is Gorilla Glue sticks. You can use whatever type of adhesive you want. Hot glue just works better for producing these videos for y'all because it's quicker, you know? But if you want to do anything permanent, if you want to sell anything, you really need to use something that's not going to come apart. And I like to do these videos just to encourage you and inspire you. So use what you have. Now these butterflies come in different sizes in the package. I have also seen at Dollar Tree, pink, green, and blue. So whichever one you like. We're gonna need something to add dimension here and something that won't be thicker than the space we have when the box is closed. So I had some little thrifted cork pieces. You can use different size beads. You can use little wood blocks. You can use pieces of sticks. You can use puffy, the little puffy uh, glue pieces or tape pieces. I'll get there in a minute, y'all, it's early. <laughs> so use what you have so that you have some dimension and it looks like the butterflies are standing up off of the moss mat. That's the look that I am going for here. And I tried to choose the butterflies that look more moth-like, you know, that had more of a simple shape, but you can use whatever you like, whatever um, floats your boat. So you can see here that they are different shapes and because the cork is slanted, some of them actually are a little more lifted toward the top and then some can be See, there's an angle here. It's like it's flying up out of the moss. If you don't have this moss background, because I got mine at the thrift store, there were two pieces of it, and I just about jumped for joy when I saw it. And of course, nobody wanted it but me. So I grabbed two mats of it. Um, but you can use like the moss, regular moss mats that you get, or you can use reindeer moss or whatever you have. You could even use pieces of tree bark that you find when you're out rummaging. You could use leaves, whatever you want to make a background, just to give it some different texture and dimension. So I took a piece of a little floral arrangement apart and it had these all stacked together, but you can recycle the little sticks. And that's what I wanted to do here because I've already used the flowers that came with it. So I just saved them. And now I can put these as a border that goes right around the edge. I like that they are sticks. And I just think that 
I don't know, this just gives it kind of a woodsy look. This is almost like what you would call the um, taxidermy boxes or, you know, when kids do the bug collections and they put their little bugs in a box to display. It's like a display. So once you've picked out what kind of sticks you want, and of course, get these out of your yard if you don't, you know, don't have some on hand that you can use, and just add these down here. I'm going to leave a little gap on each of the corners because we're going to do something a little bit different there. And for the one that I put on this side, I wanted it to almost look like a little added depth by putting this one down underneath the leaf, not the leaf, the wing of the butterfly, and then on the top part here, kind of having that wing peek through the two little pieces. It's just a little something kind of unexpected and extra that I like to do in some of my projects. And I'll place that one down. Now, I forged in my yard and got all these pieces. And I've been working with these pieces and we'll use them in the next project. You can just pick up your mushrooms, your moss, lichen, whatever you have. I've got tree bark, some Spanish moss under there, pine needles, whatever you think you might could use in your projects. I left mine outside for several days in the sun to dry out. And for the bugs to vacate the premises. All right, so I want to use some of these little, that's like a little shelf mushroom. I got to make sure that it's not too thick to close the box back down. So make sure that you kind of take the lid, put it on there, take it off, put it on there. You can, if you don't have a box like this, y'all just go get one of those clear display boxes at Dollar Tree. You know, you could use that or you can use, um, probably take the back off of a bank, the little Dollar Tree banks. I've done that before. So I want to put these down here where they look like they make sense to me, where they just feel right. I want to put them with the top side up, just like Mother Nature did it. And then because they usually come in little clusters, I wanted to put some in a cluster. And that's what I did there on the bottom. And what you see is not dirt on the back of those mushrooms. That's actually where they've been pulled off the tree. There are some little sticks that you can get at Dollar Tree, and I want to use these in different little textures and sizes to go across the border, uh, the corners. And you have to make sure that you put them far enough on the inside that you can still get your lid on, so be mindful of that and don't overlap into that space that we have on the sides. You want everything to fit there. And then the part where I put the lights on is going to be missing, so you just take your string of lights, I'll tell you how to do it, Take that string of lights and just go all around the edge of the moss mat. All the way around. It's on wire, so all you have to do is tack it down with a little bit of hot glue. Be patient. Let it dry before you move on. To me, that is gorgeous. That's so pretty. It's very, I don't know, cottage core, fairy core, goblin core. It's just got that really woodland. It's just an aesthetic that I really, really enjoy. So you can use the little lights with the box on the back and I'll show you how you attach it. So there, there it is with the wire on the inside. You can see it went around the edges. You can barely see it in there against that dark moss. And I've just glued the little thing on the back and you can glue yours on the back too. Let's see what it looks like when you light it. Oh yeah, look at that. Almost like little dragonflies are there or maybe that's a little fairy dust that's glowing on the sides. I think so. I think it's appropriate too because we're going to be doing the next project is going to be fairy related so I think that these two fit together pretty well. And then you get a tour of my ceiling there, my camera and the ceiling fan. You can watch my videos on Monday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and it's free. The next is going to be a fairy home. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun on this one. We're going to start off with some pine bark that I have in my yard. A little fairy door that came from Dollar Tree. And here's the details. It's going to clear up for you. There you go. Fairy garden forest figurine. Little door. Really cute. Needs a little work, but that's okay. We're going to change this up just a little. You can use whatever type of moss mat, loose moss, reindeer moss, whatever you have. You can use some lichen if you want to use that. Whatever you got. We're going to be using some of these little sticks. 
And then pieces that have been foraged, I want to use the bigger pieces here in this project. And then there's some that look like little burnt pancakes. You can see how these are shaped. And there are some turkey tail and some more moss. It's a lot of textures going on here, which I absolutely love. So when you're out, just think about, just look at the trees and see what you can find. So you're going to need some type of wood glue. So there's two choices here. There's Elmer's wood glue. Couldn't get the lid off, so I switched over to my Gorilla wood glue. I took the top off of this one. You can see it's really thick. It needs to be mixed up, though, because there's some liquidy parts. So I'm going to just mix that up with a little stick here. Make sure it's all the same consistency so we got no chunks. All right, so I'm just going to take the stick and right here on the bottom, there's a piece where the bark wants to come off. I'm just going to put that bark back down. We have to do some work on this piece of pine bark before we can add anything to it because it's fragile. It's very fragile. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this and stabilize as much as I can. And I'll show you how to do it. You see how that's loose there? I'm going to flip it over onto the back. And this piece, when I picked it up, I got the vacuum cleaner. I vacuumed it out. I used a brush. But you can see that it's still flaky. That's not dirt on the back. That's just part of the tree, part of the wood. So don't be distressed when you see those things. You got to be willing to get your hands dirty for this project, y'all. You really do. So I'm just going to go all down in those big cracks or fissures that are in this because I want it to be nice and strong and glued together well. I don't want anything falling apart because we're going to hang this on the wall later, right? And you're going to hang it up. You don't want it falling apart. So I'm stabilizing it. I'm going to use Gorilla hot glue sticks all over here too. Once I've got the regular glue down there, I'm going to smear it around on the top. just to stretch it out, just to stretch it across there. And then we'll add a little more glue to it because we want to be sure that it stays once that's kind of settled. You know, hot glue, you got to move really quick with it because it'll get, it'll harden up on you and then you can't make anything stick to it. So you'll just add some more as you go along. It's not going to hurt you to use more glue here because I always tell y'all to save your glue, to just be careful with your glue. You don't need a ton. But these are the projects where you need to use more. You need to be generous with that. So just using some burlap strips, I'm just going to go and push that down into that wet glue all over the back. I did use four strips. Now moving on to the Dollar Tree door. I'm going to be using a variety of paints and I'm just showing you here what colors we're going to be using to work on this door. I want it to be a little bit different than the painting that's already on there. Um, it's fine the way it is if you don't want to do painting or you don't have the paints on hand, but I like to paint. I found that that is something that I enjoy doing and I like to see the transformation. So I have a variety of brushes also. Going to probably prefer to use smaller brushes in this project because you have some small detail work to do. So we're going to start off with the wood part of the door and I'm just going to use this chocolate brown and go all over the door. I'm using the chocolate brown because the pine bark is dark. So I want it to kind of uh, recess almost when we put it down on the bark and you'll see what that looks like uh, shortly as well you won't see me paint the whole thing so don't don't exit don't leave me yet because believe me you're going to want to hang around to see how this thing turns out to make it a little quicker you can use a hair dryer or a heating tool to dry between um, the, the areas that you paint so once we've got all the brown where we need it we just dried it now i'm going to go over my green and take that bright green down and just put more of a dark or a foresty type green on there in all the areas that are green i'm going to change the colors of the flowers i'm not sure i'm going to show you when i do that i'm also going to repaint the mushrooms and the steps so it's all going to be a little different so here's the transformation this is how it looks now i love that bright yellow in the window because it looks like it's lit up Thomas Kincaid like I guess all right so it's been two days my wood is stable you can see that still little pieces will come off but you can see what we have going here this was so easy to do it just takes the time remember it's not hard it just takes a little more time 
Now I'm gonna place the door right there. That little crack was perfectly made for a fairy door. I knew it when I saw it in the yard. So I am grabbing some wood glue. I'm gonna put that in the center and then I'll be using my Gorilla Glue sticks to go around the edge to make sure that this doesn't fall because although it is small, it does have a little weight to it. It's not plastic. Okay, so I'm gonna place it down and I wanna make sure that I leave um, edge around it that's open because we're gonna add something to it. And then we're gonna give a little ledge here with a mushroom. We want our little fairy to be able to come out and hang her little legs off the edge. And by the way, there won't be a fairy in this video, but the next video that I do with a fairy, you'll get to see her. I remade a fairy and oh my goodness y'all, I'm telling you, be watching for that video. Don't know what I'm gonna title it yet, but she's amazing. So I'm gonna use this glue and I'm gonna go all around in the cracks, any place where it could drip down or where it needs to be closed. I want it to have very close contact to that bark. I'm going to take some of a moss mat and I'm just going to cut it down and I think that's going to look cute under there and then just glue that down. The hot glue is not going to bother the mushroom at all. The mushroom, if you've never felt one, feels almost like a very hard foam. They're lightweight. It's kind of hard to explain the texture to you, but I love them. I love mushrooms. I love stuff that grows in nature and I love the idea that even when things appear to be dead and appear to have no life at all that there's life that comes from it so mushrooms grow all those things will still grow the bugs will live in the you know will nest in, in there and trees are great places for birds some birds nest on the ground you know these are good little hiding spaces so what a perfect place for a fairy to hide right so I'm going to continue down, and since it gets more narrow on the bottom, I've decided to just do a little something more narrow down there on the bottom, just kind of going with the shape of this piece. Yours might not look like this, so again, my videos are for inspiration, and you can do whatever you want, and it won't be wrong if you like it, right? That is right. And I want to address a, a comment that I got in another video that I will never be like another, I won't say the name, um, but that will never be another whatever. I'm not trying to be anybody else. Um, I'm too old to do that. I'm not a copycat. There are so many ideas that people can have and crafters. It's not like an original idea. Most things that people make have already been made by somebody else. But I'm telling you now, I don't ever copy people. And if I use an idea or something that I've seen on another person's channel, I will tell you that. Otherwise, I do it myself, and I have not been watching a lot of craft videos because I don't want people to think that I just try to copy. No, I don't run off of anybody's gas. I do my own thing on my channel. I always make things my own. I try to be original, but if somebody else has already done it, that doesn't mean I copied them, right? I mean, do you get what I'm saying here? You get what I'm saying? So comments like that are just going to be deleted on this channel because... I keep this space as a positive, happy space, right? Yeah, we don't want to fool with all that negativity. We don't do that. So you can see that I've just glued moss all around that door. Love to look at it. You know, she's trying to have a little insulation around her home or him, you know, whichever one you like. And I thought it would be cute above to make maybe a little ladder going up to the top because maybe, maybe this little fairy doesn't always want to fly. She wants to walk too. She does have feet, right? So maybe they want to climb to the top and get a better look at everything. Maybe they want to climb up there and look into a bird's nest. Yep. They might want to check on their, their friend bird, right? They're friends. Fairies are friends with nature, so. We're going to make life easy for this fairy. We're going to give her a lot of options. I'm just using those little sticks from Dollar Tree, but you can use sticks from the yard, cut down, whatever. I've had these for a long time. I got them at the thrift store. You can get them at craft stores. I'm gonna use the smallest little pot and we're gonna make um, a little pot. We're gonna make a little potted plant for the fairy. Sounds silly, doesn't it? But this is a fairy home. We want her to feel happy here, he or she. 
So I'm just staining it with a little Waverly Wax on a wet uh, baby wipe. And I'm just going all around and then I'll go down into the inside slightly. You can see how it looks. Looks a little dirty, looks a little uh, woodsy. I'm just gonna poke some moss down in there, just like that. And then we're gonna add some hot glue. Voila. And then I'm just gonna take a little piece of a floral pick and just cut the little seeded section out or the little berry section out. You can use little mini flowers. You can use whatever you wanna use here. And I'm going to use a little bit of moss again, trimming it off, just giving it sort of a circular shape. We don't want sharp points in nature, right? We have curves and things like that, so this isn't a rock. We want it to be nice and curvy. And I'm going to put that right down here on the bottom. And then we're going to add some up here on this, excuse the blur there, it was focusing on my arm. And we're going to tuck some moss right here. So I'm kind of going between the mat and then the, the thicker moss. Do whichever way you want. And that's why I want to show you this, you know, whatever you like to use here. The scale of this is better to me than maybe Spanish moss. Because Spanish moss really grows hanging off of things. They don't grow in little clumps on the bottom. Um, but you could certainly use it around the edges if you wanted to. Or heck, use it however you want. We don't know. We know that uh, maybe our little fairies are crafty too and they like the Spanish moss. Just use what makes you happy, y'all. Then I'm gonna be gluing some little extras here and there. And I forgot I had this little welcome sign, but it has a pink flower. So we're gonna change it with a little sunflower yellow and some parchment white. And um, I got a tip that when you're painting, kind of stable, stabilize your hand to paint these things and that has worked wonderfully for me so whoever gave me that tip thank you I'm still learning to paint but I really like it and then the center will be yellow here's a little pack of mushrooms I got from Dollar Tree we're gonna add those because the little house is like uh, the same color right or the same type of mushroom rather the colors a little bit different the dots on here are really small and I wanted to make them bigger just because you know you do it your way you don't have to but I wanted to make these bigger, so I'm just going to go over with the tip of the brush, the bottom, and as big as the brush bottom is, or the stick part of the brush is, <laughs> that's how big the little dot will be, and then let it dry. I found this little bench at Dollar Tree. I went over it with some Waverly White, uh, some Waverly Antiquing Wax, I mean, and then I also redid the mushrooms, just like I did on the other mushrooms, and I'm going to place that down. Now she has a little picnic area on the side. Maybe she's growing herbs in that pot or she's growing some veggies. Who knows? And look, there's the bird nest that I alluded to earlier. We're going to add the bird nest. I'm just looking to see where it might fit best. And I think I like this little ledge right here. This is thrifted. You can make one with uh, moss if you want to or, you know, you could probably find one at Dollar Tree. Just going to add it. Let it sit there for a minute, make sure it's nice and, and in place. And then I'm gonna tuck some moss in the back of this little area. It looks like a little window seat or a little shelf. And I'm just gonna add some glue to some mushrooms and tuck those in there. We have mushrooms on top of mushrooms, y'all. We're using our imagination. I'll take a couple more of those sticks. Some of them had little branches off of them. So I thought that was cute and I'm gonna add those around the nest because he needs to be a little more stable, right? So I'm just gonna add one to the bottom section that hangs off and then one going upwards from the nest um, and upward to our little piece of art that we're creating. Now I can start with my turkey tails. When it gets hot here in Alabama, when it starts getting, and when I say hot, I mean consistently hot. It's been cool here and then warm and then cool and warm and rainy and then dry. But once it is consistently the right temperature for optimal mushroom growth, I will have a lot more variations of color in these turkey tails and in mushrooms. So be ready for that because I will definitely be showing you more crafts with those. Because, I mean, the best way, I mean, how much money do you think that I've spent in this piece of unique work here? 
Not very much money at all. What, maybe $4? Maybe $4. Then I'm going to add, I, I kind of like in the curvy areas, kind of want to add a little more. And if there's a piece of this bark that has a little bit of a lip um, that tucks under, it's the perfect place to add a little turkey tail or something like that. It rounds it out. It gives it something extra. But you can do whatever you like here. These, the texture of these is like a thick, papery texture. They're pretty tough, but you can cut them and you can uh, break them and tear them if you need to reshape them. And I want to add these here and there. So they do come, they will grow in a cluster, but most of the time when I remove it from the tree in order to keep from breaking them, I remove them in sections. So now it looks like they grew that way, right? Now I'm just changing it to make it look like that's the way they grew on the tree. We're gonna add some more mushrooms in here. You can see that my little welcome sign is up there with the little white and yellow. I like that it uh, matches a little bit better. And again, you don't have to repaint the pieces if you don't like, it's just something I enjoy doing. Let's tuck some around this little bird's nest for a little extra security. And maybe the fairy likes to sit on there, right? Maybe she's flying and she likes to light right there. I get lost doing these types of projects. Like I, it's that part of me that, and you know if you're a creator or a crafter, that it ideas just come to you and then you're working off of a thought and then you sort of start working off of emotion or intuition it's like something something else starts telling you what to do like the logic is gone and you just start moving by feeling and that's how it works for me when i do these types of projects i get lost in it and that's kind of where i was here but i think this looks cute And if I was a fairy, I would definitely be digging this. Yes, this is prime real estate, folks. Prime. Look at it. I mean, y'all, this seriously, seriously, so cute and so fun to do. Are you getting ideas? Are you feeling inspired yet? All right, so we're gonna have to have a way to hang this up because it's not gonna be a project that lays down. So I'm going to take some of this little tube of whatever this is, and I'm going to tie three knots in one side, and then we're gonna do the same thing over here. I just sped it up because nobody wants to see me do that. Slipping the knots right on top of one another to give us some bulkiness. And then you're going to have a hanger that looks about like this can see there this is now stable so I'm going to gently flip it over I don't want to break anything because you know it still can break and it still does flake off a little bit here holding it up with one hand I'm gonna add hot glue and put the knot section right down in the hot glue right on the back toward the top now I'm using this type of hanger because the weight may shift because of the size of this so you want to be able to have a hanger that you can move back and forth here are those two projects. Y'all, look at this. I think that these are really good spring and summer projects. I really think that this is something that you can do. Most certainly, you can do these projects and you can make it your own. You don't have to use lights if you don't want to. You don't have to use those butterflies. You don't have to use that moss. Use what you have. So we got free project pieces in here. That piece of beautiful bark. And by the way, I have many more pieces of that bark. So I am hoping through the rest of the year that I can do more projects for different seasons. What do you think about that idea? I think that would be cute. Very cute. The little fairy house and the different seasons. 
Is this speaking to your childhood heart? Maybe you're an adult and you still have a special place for fairies. Maybe you're a believer. If you are, I hope that you enjoyed these two projects because I had a fantastic time making it. My husband is super proud of this piece on the bark. Very proud of it. And I'm so tickled that he enjoys my projects, comes downstairs and checks it all out. I really appreciate y'all stopping by today. I appreciate the new folks. I appreciate the ones of y'all who are continuously supporting me. It means the world to me. Y'all check out my merch. If you like mushrooms, I've got some shirts and stuff with that on there. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. I will see you again very soon. Bye.